Hello and welcome to the last of the lectures in this week 6 of the course titled Approximate Reasoning Using Fuzzy Set Theory, a course offered over the NPTEL platform. Let's have a quick recap of the topics that we have dealt with in this week. We looked at fuzzy if then rules in depth, both from the different perspectives that we can look them at and also in terms of the classification. We have already seen the impact of one particular type of classification, whether a fuzzy if then rule is a single input single output rule or a multi input single output rule on the fuzzy relational inference scheme itself. Then we moved on to looking at fuzzy inference schemes, a very general schematic of it. And we have been discussing one particular type of fuzzy inference, which is the fuzzy relational inference. And the last lecture, we have looked even at handling multi input single output rule. In this lecture, we will look at fuzzy relational inference when we have multiple rules, that means a knowledge base which consists of many fuzzy if then rules. A quick recap of the mechanism itself. It's a two step procedure. We begin by representing the rule by a fuzzy relation which relates the antecedent which is a fuzzy set on X to the consequent which is a fuzzy set on Y. And this we capture it as a fuzzy relation on X cross Y. In the next step, given an input A dash, we compose the input with the relation that represents the rule and we obtain an output. Well, we'll revisit one particular illustrative example that we have seen and then move on from there. So we have a rule. First step is to represent it as a relation. For instance, let A and B be given as these vectors. And now we are going to use an implication, essentially the curdle implication, to relate A and B to obtain the relation. We have seen this before that it will turn out to be this. Perhaps we will do this once more. So what we have is A here, which is 0 0.3, 1, 0.7. B is 0 0.4, 0 0.8. And the codal implication we know is essentially 1 if x is less than or equal to y and y if x is less than y. So what we want to do is we want r of ab to be related <coughs> by the codal implication. That means a and b we want it to be related by codal implication. So we have seen what it means is taking the outer product with respect to the total implication. Simply put, what we do is we take 0.3, 1 and 0 0.7, apply the total implication. 0 .4, 0 .4. Now, let's fix 3 here. We are comparing 3 to 0 0.4. Under the total implication, we see 3 is less, 0.3 is less than or equal to 0 0.4. So this becomes 1 and 0.3 with 0.8 once again it becomes 1 and you will see that is exactly what we have is in the first step. Now let's look at 1 and 0.4. We know that 1 is the left neutral element of the cardinal implication so that means you will get 0.4 and 0.8 and finally if we look at fix 0.7 and look at 0.4 0.7 is greater than 0.4, so you would get 0.4 here. But 0.7 is less than 0.8, so you will get a 1. So this is essentially the relation that you have got from the rule using the curdle implication. Now, next step is given an A dash, we need to compose and obtain an output. Since it is CRI, we are going to use a sup T composition. In this case, we have chosen the minimum component t norm, which means the formula looks like this and when you compose it with this, we would get the output like this. Well, once again, it is very easy to see 
that in this composition, all we are doing is we are taking the max among the min. So if you look at this row into this column, the minimum of this is 0.4, minimum is 0, minimum is 0.4. So the max of it is 0.4. Similarly, 0.4 and 1, it is 0.4. 0 and 0.8 it is 0, 0.6 and 1 it is 0.6, max of them is 0.6. So this is how we obtain the output. Now in the general scheme, the form of this particular CRI, we could write like this. To build the rule base, we are using an implication, in this case the Gödel implication, and we are using a soup T composition where T is T and Right. We have seen how to do it with MISO rule also. We'll just look at it in terms of the form. There's a general quadruple form that you can look at uh, any general fuzzy inference scheme itself as coming from X and Y, the input and output domain, and you have a rule base, and you have an inference operation. We saw in the case of FRI with CISO, single, single output, single output, single input, single output rule, all we needed were two things. One, an operation to capture the relation between the antecedent and the consequent and the composition. In the case of MISO, we also wanted another operation to combine the antecedents. Well, now let's go to the next step, which is how to deal with multiple rules. So now, if we have noticed, we have always written the general form for a rule base because that's how we abstracted it from the general schema. So we are already have multiple rules, even though we have discussed only for a single rule case. Now we have indicated as AI and BJ. Uh, the index index sets could be different. However, typically we have many more AIs than BJs, which is quite common because we want to look at fuzzy inference mechanism as a function mapping f of x to f of y. That means we typically should not be having less number of AIs and more number of BJs then it wouldn't be a mapping because you might you would have to map AI to many BJs. We'll come to talking about rule bases, complete rule bases, sparse rule bases, consistent rule bases a little later but for now it is typical that we have more AIs than BJs. For instance Consider this rule. If temperature is AI, then fan speed is BJ. Now, temperature is the linguistic variable, fan speed is the linguistic variable. These two take values over the fuzzy sets on X and Y. So, now if you look at what are the linguistic values these two linguistic variables can take, perhaps it might look like this. The temperature can take linguistic value, values like very hot, hot, almost hot, average, warm cold and very cold, while fan speed can assume the linguistic values fast, medium and slow. This is what you have extracted given the domain knowledge. And you will clearly see there are more linguistic values that temperature can assume than fan speed. And perhaps it might even assume. I said we will look at rules, the uh, each rule actually capturing some part of the domain locally. This kind of an interpretation we will see soon enough perhaps in the next week of lectures when we are discussing similarity based reasoning. For the moment, it suffices to know that the in index sets i and j may not be same, but typically i tends to be, the, uh, the cardinality of i tends to be greater than, greater than the cardinality of j. So this is what happens, but without loss of generality for this lecture, we will assume that the cardinalities are same. It is only to help us with a notation. So thus, we will write the rules as if x tilde is ai, then y tilde is bi. Well, when you have multiple rules and when you want to apply a fuzzy relation inference, there are two inference strategies. What are they? The first one of them is called first aggregate, then infer. It's typically abbreviated and called as FATI strategy. What do we have? We have a set of 15 rules. First, what we do is, for each of them, we obtain a relation Ri. Just like if you had a single rule, you obtain a relation. Similarly, for each of those rules, we obtain a relation Ri, R1, R2, so on to R1. Then, we aggregate all of these relations 
into a single relation using an operation G. So you have n relations representing these n rules. We aggregate all of them into a single overall relation R. Then we infer with this global relation. Now given an A dash, we would just compose it with the global relation R to get the B dash. So first we aggregate all the relations, then we infer. So that's where it gets its nomenclature from as first aggregate, then infer. Note that this G operation can be any binary associated fuzzy logic operation. Because what are we doing? We are actually aggregating Ri's which are fuzzy relations which are essentially fuzzy sets on X cross Y. So this is the general procedure, the inference strategy of patterning. First aggregate all the rules and then infer with a given input. Visually if you look at it, we have A dash, we have these N relation and what we are interested is in obtaining B dash. Remember these Ri's are capturing each of these rules and each rule has some local knowledge about the domain that is under consideration. What we first do is combine all of them into a single R and then use A dash to compose it with R to obtain our B dash. So this is essentially how we do the inference in here. Now there is also an alternate strategy which says first infer then aggregate. Now what is this strategy? Once again we are given multiple rules. For each one of them we obtain the relation that represents a rule. Now instead of aggregating all the rules first, what we will do is we will obtain the individual outputs. That means given A dash, we assume there is each one of those rules is separate, the relations are there, we are actually composing A dash with each one of these Ri's and obtaining the corresponding B i dash. It is not the B dash, it is B i dash. So locally we are inferring. Then we aggregate this to an overall output. Once again using an operation which we have denoted it as G. So this what it does is it aggregates all these B i dashes from B1 dash, B2 dash, 1 to B i dash. Note that these B i dash they are all fuzzy sets on Y. So in that sense once again we can use any binary associated fuzzy logic operation. If you would like to look at it visually what we are doing in theta is we are not aggregating all the rules instead we are taking a dash composing it with r1 and getting a b1 dash composing it with r2 getting a b2 dash so on and so forth composing it with rn and getting a b1 dash then we combine aggregate all these b a dashes to obtain a b dash so this is how these two strategies differ so if you were to look at the modified form, how we can capture it. There is a general FAM form. We have seen that for a single CSO rule case, all we need is F which captures the relation and the composition. In the case of multiple CSO, not only do we need F to capture the relation, but we also need a G, an aggregation function, which either aggregates the rules or the local inputs B dashes, B I dashes. And of course, we also need a composition. So if you are looking at multiple meso rules, of course, we need an F, also the antecedent combiner, the aggregation G and the composition. So this essentially takes care of all possible scenarios. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's start with CR. So assume that we are given two rules and the A, A1, A2, B1, B2 are given as follows. So once again we assume that x is discretized by 3 points and y by 2 points. You might immediately recall this is something that we have already used earlier. Instead of a and b we are just now calling it as a1, b1. Just so that we can make the calculations easier. So now what we want is a multiple Caesar role is given to us and we need to handle this using a fuzzy relational inference. Now what are the things that we need? We need an f to relate the antecedent to the consequent. We also need an aggregation operation G and of course the composition. Now let's assume the Gödel implication for relating the antecedent to the consequent. Then the question now comes what should this aggregation G be? 
Well, this is where we'll go back to one of the classifications that we have given on fuzzy if then rules. If you recall, we discussed when a fuzzy if then rule is conjunctive or implicative. Even though we have written it in this form, we could also represent it as if x is a, then y is b. So now, if the rules are conjunctive in nature, that means they actually give positive pieces of information. They are more like association rules and they emphasize on the different possibilities that you have. So in that sense, these are called possibility rules. And what we will do is, we combine them with a disjunction because any one of them is possible. So we use a disjunction to combine them. However, if it is an implicative rule, then they actually give negative pieces of information. They in fact constrain the consequent. If x is a, then y necessarily has to be b. So in that sense, these are necessity rules. And if you have pieces of knowledge, each of which is constraining, then you will have to ensure that all of them are valid, in which sense we will have to use a conjunctive operate, operator to combine all these rules. So let's return to the scenario. Now we are in fact using an implication to relate the antecedent and the consequent. So it is only incumbent on us that we should consider a conjunction for G. Remember, this is when we are actually going with what we know about the rules. But of course, theoretically, Nothing precludes you from using any other operation for G. But since we have some interpretation at hand, let's try to stick to it. And so let's consider G to be a T norm. And for ease of calculation, let's take it to the minimum T norm here. Of course, we are considering CRI, which means the composition automatically becomes sub T composition. And once again, for ease of calculation, let us consider the minimum T norm, sub min composition. So let's start with the calculations. First, we need to determine the relations of the rules. Remember, these are two rules given to us, a1, b1, a2, b2. And we use f to relate the antecedent to the consequent. So now, given a1, b1, we obtain the corresponding relation. This is exactly the same thing that we have done a few minutes ago. So we know that this relation is right. And similarly, if you use a2, b2 and the Gödel implication, we would get this relation. So we have two relations from two rules, R1 and R2. This is the first step. In the second step of party, we first aggregate the rules. So now these are the two rules, the relations, two relations representing the rules. So we aggregate these relations with the aggregation operation G. In our case, G happens to be the minimum. So we take R1, we take the minimum operation and we take R2. Now, this is even though they look like they are written in terms of matrices, the operation min is in fact being done component wise. So, if you take 1 and 0.3 minimum with 0.3, then it is 0.3, 1 and 1 is 1, 0.4 and 0.3 is 0.3, 0.8 and 0.7 is 0.7, and 0.4 and 0.3 is 0.3, 1 and 1 is 1. In fact, you can see that this entire matrix is smaller than this with respect to the usual component wise order. So the min of that is essentially going to turn out to be this. So in the second step, we have aggregated the relations that we have into an overall relation R. The third step is to infer with this aggregated relation. We have this. So B dash is A dash composed with R. Now let's use the same A dash that we have been considering, 0 0.406. And the composition is given as sup min composition. So this is what we have. And clearly, when we take this and compose with this, we have to look at taking min component wise and the max of them. So I think if you would like to write this once again, what we have is 0 0.406 composed with 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. What essentially we are doing is we are going to look at the minimum between 0.4 and 0.3, which is 0 0.3, 0 and 0.3 is 0, 0 0.6 and 0 0.3 is 0 0.3. So the minimum is essentially 0 0.3, 0 0.6 and 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 0 0.3, 0 0
and once again let's consider with respect to the second okay. 0.4 and 1 it is 0.4 0 and 0.7 it is 0 0.6 and 1 it is 0.6 so the maximum is 0.6 so what we will get is 0.3 to 0.6 so this is the inferred output what did we do we considered both these relations aggregated them first and inferred using this relation let's also look at an example for theta first infer then aggregate so essentially we are going to consider the same system which means we have the same relations representing the rules however now here we first infer that means given these two relations we independently infer the corresponding b b1 dash and b2 dash so b1 dash is a dash composed with r1 in this case a dash is this and this is the r1 once again if you perform the sup min composition this is the output you would get and similarly for b2 dash we take a dash and compose it with this r2 dash here and if you see what we would get is we would get 0.3 and 0.6 as the output so these are the individual local outputs b1 dash and b2 dash in the second step of theta what we are going to do is we are going to aggregate the inferred local rule outputs to aggregate again we use the min operation so taking these two doing the component wise min what we get is 0 0.3 0 0.6 so this is essentially how we do um, the inferencing with respect to CRA whether we apply the 40 inference strategy or first infer then aggregate inference strategy let us also look at an example in the case of PKS so once again here we consider the same system we consider the Gödel implication for relating the antecedent to the consequent min because it's implicative type so staying true to the interpretation we want to use a conjunction operation which we have chosen to be the min t naught and obviously we are discussing bks so this becomes in i composition and in this case we have chosen the clean beans implication let's look at how to do party in this so now it's the same system a's and b's have not changed and we are obtaining the relations from the rules using the gradle implication so hence these relational matrices also don't change they remain the same now in this case we first aggregate once again we are using the same aggregation operation min so nothing changes in this step either now things start to change now we need to infer with this aggregated relation and now inferring with this relation means composition comes into picture and we are using bks inference which means the inf i composition comes into place so b dash is obtained as a dash composed with r in this case it is essentially taking a dash and using the inf i composition with i being the clean beans implication so once again let us look at this here <coughs> it is essentially the same matrix so we need to use the same matrix first and we need to use the so how will it look like so now the two components that we have here let's first take 0.4 and 0.3 so now we are using minimum in i composition i mean i composition because it's a discrete a few of a finite number of elements are only there and we are using clean beans implication please recall what clean beans implication is it's an sn implication where the t column is max and the negation is 1 minus x so when we consider 0 0.4 and 0 0.3 it is 1 minus 0 0.4 comma 3 max 0 0.3 max of them so 0 0.6 or 0 0.3 it is 0 0.6 if you consider 0 and 0.3 since it's an implication it will be 1 and if you consider 0 0.6 and 0 0.3 it is min of maximum of 1 minus 0 0.6 comma 0 0.3 which is maximum of 0 0.4 comma 0 0.3 and so it is 0 0.4 similarly if you consider 0 0.4 and 1 I'm going to talk about min in a minute we know that if y is 1 it is 1 0 implies anything it is 1 
and once again 0.6 and 1 if you take this one. So now this is what we are looking at. This is equal to, if you take the min of them, it's 0.4. Come on. So you see here, this is the output we get using VKS and the FATI strategy. Let us also apply on the same system VKS with theta strategy. Once again, the relations do not change, but now the first step itself will change because using these relations, we need to infer B1 dash and B2 dash using the infi computation. So these are R1 and R2. So B1 dash is A dash composed with R1 using infi where i is the clean beans implication uh, just as we have done now if you apply this what you would get is this as the output the vector 0 0.41 and if you apply a dash on compose it with r2 once again you get the vector 0 0.41 so now we have inferred independently these are the local outputs now we need to aggregate these local outputs using the aggregation operation, which in this case is the min operation. Here both the vectors are identical, so you get this as the output. So this is how you would do, uh, you would handle BKS inference when you have multiple CSO rules, either using theta or FATI. So once again, if you are looking at FATI, all you do is get individual rules, aggregate them first, and use that aggregated overall global rule, global relation to infer from the given A dash by composition. If you are using theta, then keep all these relations separately, infer locally, that means use R1 and A dash to get a B1 dash, R2 and A dash to get a B2 dash, so on and so forth till B n dash, then aggregate these fuzzy sets B1 dash, B2 dash till B n dash to obtain your dash. Right? Some observations are worthy of making. Look at for this particular example where the A's and B's have remained the same and so has A dash. When we applied CRI with FATI inference strategy, the obtained B dash was 0 0.3.6. When we applied FETA strategy, once again it was 0 0.3.6. On the other hand, when we applied BKS, on the same system, with FATI, we obtained the output as 0.41 and with FETA again, we obtained the output 0.41. It throws up many interesting questions, a couple of them for you. First question that you would ask is, on the same system, just by changing the composition, we have got two different outputs, two different B dashes. Which is the correct one? Another question that we could ask is, just looking at it, so it appears that in CRA, whether you use theta or fatty, or in BKS, whether you use theta or fatty, the outputs seem identical. But is this magic? Will this magic work every time? Or is it just an anomaly? Or are there clear conditions under which theta will be equal to fatty? Now, these are very interesting questions. As was mentioned earlier in one of the lectures, we will discuss these. And to be able to discuss them and give a clear answer, we would make use of some of the theoretical structures that we have built up, we have seen earlier in the earlier weeks uh, of this course. A quick recap of what we have dealt with in this whole week. We have looked at fuzzy relational inference in depth. We have seen there are two major types, the compositional rule of inference and the Bandler cohort subproduct. There are two inference strategies when we are considering multiple rules, theta, first infer then aggregate or first aggregate then infer. And there are two types of rules to consider single input, single output or multiple input, single output. What next? We will look at the other major type of fuzzy inference mechanism, essentially the similarity based reasoning system. Once again, a good resource for the topics covered in this lecture is the book of uh, Drengov, Helen Doon and Ryan Fang, and of course, also the book of George Clear and Bowie.
glad that you could join us for this lecture and hope to see you soon in the next lecture. Thank you all.